Hi, my name is Ashling. I'm a poet and I'm going to be doing a writing workshop for you today. This is part of a project called Voices Rising and that's part of a programme called Walthamstow Garden Party in the air. Voices Rising wants to hear from you. It wants to hear from the local community about how they've been dealing with what's been going on, about what your experiences have been and how you've been handling it all. Walthamstow Garden Party is a festival that normally happens every year in Lloyd Park in Walthamstow and it is full of poetry, music, dancing. It's a really beautiful space. It can't happen physically this year but it's going to happen virtually in some way and if you would like to contribute to that then you can send in a video of you reading out some writing. It could be something that we create today, it could be something else that you want to share. And there will be details of that on this page somewhere. So please do read that and send in those videos if you'd like to. I would love to hear them. Um, and I think that in this time when it's really hard to find that connection with people, any way that we can get that, whether it be virtually or online, I think it's a really nice thing to feel like we're a part of. So today we're going to do some writing exercises as a way for you to create something, for you to express yourself and for you to just get some things out really. Um, it's a time for you to just spend, spend with yourself. So I hope that you enjoy it. All you will need is a pen and some paper and just let yourself go and see what happens and I'm sure that you'll surprise yourself. So to start we're going to do a little warm-up exercise. Sometimes it's really useful to just get something down on the page so it's not as intimidating as a blank page. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is by writing a free write. So a free write is a tool that I use quite often and lots of writers do to generate ideas and just to get something going and to then see what comes from that. Um, so the only rules for a free write really are that you shouldn't stop writing when you begin, you should just carry on, your pen should not leave the page. So there's a kind of a sense of speed about this as well. You're not stopping, you're not reading over what you've written, you're just continuously writing. It doesn't need to make sense, um, but you just need to keep that going and keep that energy up. So the way that I'm going to do it today, there are a few different ways of doing it. But I'm just going to ask a question and we're going to write from there. I will speak along the way and maybe guide you a little bit. If that's useful, listen in to me. If it's not, then just go wherever your mind is taking you. Um, and we're just going to write for a few minutes and see what happens. So if everyone's got their pen and paper, the question is, how are you? How are you? So just start writing and go wherever your mind takes you. So you're checking in with yourself. Keep that pen moving. You might want to think about how you've been feeling about what's been on your mind lately? Is there anything that you've been telling yourself or, or anything that you've been having conversations with yourself about? If there is, you might wanna bring it onto the page and write about it. How are your emotions? Are there any feelings that are dominating at the moment? 
you've been feeling more than you maybe normally do. What's your mood like? What are you wrestling with? What are you wrestling with? whatever's coming up just go with it keep it flowing it's coming up for a reason just keep on writing If there's any questions that are coming up, I'm finding myself actually, I've, I've started writing some questions to myself that are kind of coming in, coming up about this. Um, so if you want to ask yourself anything, then you can in this time. What's been a nice moment in your day or your week? So something uplifting. What's uplifted you this week? Might have been something you watched, something you experienced, someone you spoke to that just brought that little bit of joy into your week. Is there something that you want to celebrate? What do you want to celebrate? How is lockdown treating you? How is lockdown treating you? And then in these last few seconds, if there's just anything else that you want to explore, anything else that you want to get down on that page, anywhere else your mind is going or racing to, just put it all down in these last few seconds. And then you can come to an end and put your pen down. So I hope that felt nice. I hope that was good for you. Um, obviously that's a question that we're often asked numerous times a day by different people, um, but often we rush over the response. So we don't really give a, a truthful answer or we say, yeah, fine, how are you? Um, so giving yourself that space to check in and seeing what comes up, I think in a free write, um, often we surprise ourselves Often there are things that are in our head or kind of our subconscious that we haven't even realised and suddenly we've written them and you're like, oh, that's that's what I've been thinking of. That's why I might have been feeling a bit weird. Um, and then you can kind of look back over that or that's why I feel really happy this this 
week, this day, because this happened to me. Um, so you can kind of use it to look back on it and um, just kind of check in and then sit with that, sit with those emotions, sit with those feelings. Um, and it might tell you something that you needed to know or that you kind of already knew but hadn't um, articulated yet. Um, I hope you are well. So, in our first activity then, um, now that we're all warmed up and we've got some words on that page, we're going to move on to our first activity. And what I want you to do first, uh, really quickly, is just jot down a list, so just literally a list of different things that you have been missing in lockdown. So you're literally just going to have 30 seconds. So write down things you have been missing in lockdown. So these could be friends, family. It could be people that you've really been missing that you haven't been able to see. It could be places. Um, so coffee shops or specific areas of London, central London, your place of work. It could be buildings. It could be things, so it could be things like rush hour or hugging, missing hugging people, um, or, you know, getting the night tube home or something like that, um, something specific, or it could be experiences, so like um, eating in a restaurant, for example. Um, okay, and stop. Okay, and just put that to a start, put that to the side for a second. We're going to come back to that later. So what I want us to look at now is a form of poetry called an ode. So you've probably heard of it before. Um, kind of some famous examples that you might have heard of in school are things like um, Ode to the Nightingale um, or Ode to the Grecian Urn by John Keats. Um, and... An ode is a lyric poem that addresses a specific thing. And really, there are different ways of doing it. Um, and, you know, each, each type of ode has slightly different rules. But the great thing that I love about it is that actually you can do whatever you want with it. So there's not really that many strict and harsh rules. It can literally just be about anything. Um, it is just addressing something specifically um, and it's lyrical. So I want to read to you a poem that is an ode. It's called Ode to the Unpaid Electricity Bill. To my lover's selectively distant brain. How she lets only the federal letters sit abandoned in the mailbox, but still checks it each day, hoping for something handwritten. How she curates a care package for me and calls the post office every day until it is delivered to my doorstep. How meticulous she is for love and reckless for everything that is not love. My lover, who, after the first night I slept in her bed, woke to an unworthy light switch, a useless outlet, and apologised profusely, swore it was not a matter of money, but rather of mind, promised it wasn't usually like this. This never happens. The electricity company has a grudge against me. And I sat in the dark, unfazed, while my phone battery dwindled, computer dimmed to dead, until I left for work, not yet knowing that this, this messy girl would be my great love. But for now, dear reader, in this story, she is just a new frantic girl, certain that her quiet house is the deal breaker, that after work, I won't return and will instead find a new lover who uses a credit card or auto pay, and no matter how much I reassure her, 
I cannot explain the smell of her scalp has enough electricity to power the village of myself. Her voice a reading lamp, her stomach a power strip, each finger a thousand volts. My love, if I could tell you, I would. Every day before this has been a day without electricity, a dark house, digging for my wallet and keys. Who needs light when I have you? What is light if not your constant hum? Who are they to tell me what light is? The men in their navy polos and white trucks. Who are they to name the power of this house? And so, instead of reassurance, I just come back. And when I do, of course, my lover is standing in the living room. There she is. Surrounded by 40 candles, surrounded by light. Of course, my lover, there she is, in the organic light. Of course, my lover, there she is, fumbling the flame, telling me she tried her best. So that poem is owed to the unpaid electricity bill and it's by Olivia Gatwood and it's from her collection, Life of the Party. Um, great cover um, and I I love that poem I think that there is so much to love about that poem um, so of course you know it's an ode to the unpaid electricity bill but it comes to mean so much more it's an ode to her lover it's an ode to this great love um, there's so much going on in this poem and there's so much to unpack um, and I hope you felt the power of it as well. Uh, you know, through the electricity bill, she comes to tell us about her lover's personality, about these personality traits that she has. So, you know, a line I absolutely love is how meticulous she is for love and reckless for everything that is not love. Um, that idea is really beautiful. Um, and I think that one thing that's quite powerful, you know, is that, that idea of the electricity bill is not lost as we go along. Um, so it's almost as if, you know, the poet has thought about all of these things related to an unpaid electricity bill. So through that, you know, you could maybe think of darkness, you could maybe think of other sources of light, you could think of light bulbs, you could think of candles. Um, and these are all of all things that then do come in throughout the poem. Um, and it all kind of ties back to that theme and to that title. Um, so I think that's really powerful. I love it. Um, so what I want us to do now is kind of use that poem as a model and use that as something in our heads that we have um, as an example of an ode. And there are so many more other odes that you can kind of go and look at after this. And I want you to return to that list that you made of all those things that you've been missing in lockdown. And I want you to look over it and I want you to select one. So the one that is speaking to you most, the one that's standing out, the one that you think you could write the most about. And don't take too long to decide. You might have it already. Okay, great. And now that you have that, um, write that thing down on your page and what I want you to do first, just for a couple of minutes, is to jot down, just notes, um, jot down anything that you, any attributes of that thing, okay? So, for example, if it's a place that you've decided to choose, um, you might write down if it's busy, if it's normally quiet, if it's secluded, and you're just literally jotting down those words, so you're not taking any further at this stage. You know, what do you see around you when you're there? Thinking about physical attributes. So if it's a person that you've chosen from your list, then how tall are they? What does their hair feel like? What do they smell like? And you're literally just jotting down all of these things. How do you feel when you are looking at 
this thing, this place, this person? How do you feel when you're in this place? And then also you might want to do, as we were discussing about those connections between that thing. So when you think about it, what are the other things that come to mind? Okay, and just jotting down last couple of things now about this thing that you've chosen. And if you haven't guessed by now, come to a close there. If you haven't guessed by now, we're going to write an ode about this thing that you have chosen. So the title of your poem is Ode 2. So you can write that down, Ode 2. And then it's just whatever it is that you have chosen. And as you would have noted in Olivia's poem, Olivia Gatwood's poem, an ode often is praising this thing, right? It's finding all the good in this thing. Um, it's glorifying it, whatever it might be. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the thing you're writing about is something you even like, but the ode has to praise it in some way. So, for example, you know, if you're actually writing like an ode to jealousy, that can be really interesting. Because if you have to find the benefits and all the, the good parts of jealousy, that's going to create something that's like quite different from what you might expect to create. Um, but yeah, so have that sense of 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 praise when we're thinking about this ode as well okay so you've got your title um, and I'm now just going to give you some time and I want you to write your ode so this now we're doing actual lines we're writing full sentences um, and remember the two things to remember are you have to address it in some way directly, so you're directly addressing what you have chosen in whichever way you want to, um, and you're praising it, and it's kind of lyrical, so it, that means that it's not necessarily narrative, it's not necessarily a, necessarily a story of this has happened and then this happened, but it's more like emotions and feelings towards this place, person, thing, okay? So... Your time starts now. Explore what it is that you want to say about this place, this thing, this person, this small moment. So to help you, you can look back at that list of attributes that you made. So you could, you know, if it's about a person, it could be six foot two. And you could bring that into your ode in some way. Um, I look up at you all six foot two of you, you know, however it is that you want to bring those attributes into this ode so that the reader or the listener is getting a full picture of what it is you're describing.
and again you're addressing it so you might want to say you are that could be your form of address or are you just alluding to it thinking of your senses and how you can bring that into your ode What are you celebrating? What are you praising? And you might want to think now about when you next get to either go to this place or see this person or do this thing after lockdown, what will that moment be like? What is that going to look like? How's that going to feel? Describe that to us. And you're going to start drawing this to a close now. So start thinking about all those last little bits that you want to say, those things from that list you made that you haven't quite got to yet. Any way that you want to close off this poem, any way that you want to leave a lasting impression on your reader or your listener. What's that last thing that you want to say? And then come to a close when you can. Find a stopping point. Last line. Okay, so what you should have now is your own ode, your own personal ode to something that you have been missing and that you will be returning to hopefully at some point in the not so distant future. Um, And I think that that, it's a really flexible form. And the the reason that I love it is because you can get so specific with it. You can have (coughs) an ode you know, an ode to a hug, an ode to 
um, the bird outside my window. It can literally be the most kind of um, interesting, specific thing or detail. Or it could be these big sweeping poems like an ode to England or kind of like these these kind of more big general things um and you're just quite free to say what you want uh, so I actually ended up mine was an ode to the night tube home <laughs> which feels like a distant memory right right now um so yeah I hope that you've created something that you're happy with and that you like what we're going to do now our last exercise to close up is something that I wanted us to kind of look forward to life out of lockdown to what that is going to be like to what that is going to feel like and also I think that often we rush through moments in our lives because it's always on to the next thing or you're too busy to think about things or to stop and to reflect but I think that at the moment we actually have this time where we can reflect a little bit more and think about things um and so what I want us to write is I want you to do a letter to your future self. And this is a chance to really kind of consider what we've done in lockdown, what we've learnt in lockdown, um, you know, what we want to change, what we want to remember. Um, and anything that you want to say to your future self or take from this time. Um, and, you know, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a form, kind of this letter form, where you can be as open and wide and um, broad as you want. You know, you can include anything that you want. Um, and what I want to do is read you an example of a letter that I wrote to myself. So um, I only wrote this yesterday um and it's kind of a way to yeah to check in with yourself and it's quite interesting actually again like what comes up so I'll read this to you to kind of get a sense of what it could potentially look like dear Ashling, I know you are somewhere brighter now the current moment I write to you from feels as distant as a faded scar you enter the seaside like you said you would when you were on your walk and couldn't stop thinking of fish and chips. You swore you smelt the sea when you stepped outside your front door mid-May. Remember when your niece FaceTimed and she looked so happy and so cared for, couldn't believe her luck having her mum and dad around her all the time. Don't forget when you heard loud singing from your garden and you both went to investigate and stumbled upon two singers doing a gig in their driveway. And you stood, socially distant from other neighbours you'd never seen before. And you smiled at them, as if somehow after all of this, you knew exactly who they were. You are missing the days of no commutes. The quiet walks around the roads you had not walked along before, despite their closeness to your door. You are missing not having anything to prepare for. Not having that Sunday night feeling in your chest as you pack your bag for school the next day, which never really goes away, no matter your age. Don't forget, next time you're about to bail on a night out that you were craving that buzz for months. You have forgotten most of the answers to the numerous Zoom quizzes you did, but you remember doing them. How important friends and family were in this time of absence and lack this time of distance and impermanence. What have you taken from all of this? You still try to call your family more frequently, make it a ritual. They are all we have when the world turns to chaos around us. You felt the reality of that. And though you couldn't get the train to see them and felt how far around London you had scattered, like spokes on a bicycle wheel, you felt more connected to the centre than ever. You learnt how to slow your body down. Not to make everything a stop-off point to the next destination. You had to come to a standstill, however uncomfortable it was to stop moving. 
Remember this moment of calm, in amongst the fear of it all. When you are running faster than your feet can keep up with, remember to breathe in. Remember that when the world as we knew it ground to a halt, you still existed. It kept turning. Nothing is as dramatic or unmanageable as it seems. Retreat into the silence when necessary. We've been through worse than this. So that was my letter to my future self and I'm going to write another one with you now as well. Um, and so it's really up to you, it's really free in terms of what you want to write. Um, I'm going to give you some prompts if that is useful and if you want to follow along with those but you don't have to, you can just go completely in your own direction and again use this time as a time to speak to yourself, we very rarely get that. Um, so, if you want to write dear and then your name and start your letter. So you might want to start with, I know you are, I know you are. And you might want to say something about the current moment I write to you from feels or where I write to you from feels. How does this moment feel to you right now? You might want to say something that future you has done or somewhere that future you has been since lockdown. So again, this is some point in the future when we're all having a great time again um, and everything is good with the world, hopefully. And um, you might want to tell us about that time. So you went to, you saw, what have you done since you've been back in the world? Remember when, remember when, is there a moment from lockdown that you want to keep, that you'll treasure, that you don't want to forget? It can be a moment of unity, it can be something with your neighbours that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Um, you know, if you've if you've celebrated anything in lockdown for yourself or for somebody else, then that might be a really lovely memory to remember. The joy in amongst everything else that's been happening.
don't forget. So what is something about this period that you don't want your future self to forget? What are you going to take with you? And other things might be coming up here. You might be going in different directions. That's absolutely fine. It's your time and it's your space. You are missing. You are missing. Is there something actually that in the future you're looking back on and thinking, oh, I loved it when it was really quiet. I loved it when there was less traffic on the road. I loved it when I could spend more time at home with somebody. What do you want to take away from it? So what have you taken from this period, in this future? Are there any lessons to learn about yourself, about others? It could be about the world. You learnt, you learnt, so this could be a new skill that you have taken up or learnt in your lockdown time, I'm trying to learn Spanish for the first time, I don't know if I'll have learnt the whole of Spanish by the end of this but um, I might know a few words, or it could be something that you've learned about yourself so you know lots of us have been put in these situations and have had to deal with things have you been surprised at the way that you've dealt with things have you learned that you're stronger than you thought you were that you're more resilient that you're more positive than you might have thought you were Okay, and now 
You could put another remember in there if you want to close it off. Um, you might want to think about what are your hopes for this future that you're in right now. Um, where do you want to be? How do you want to feel? So you could say, I hope that, I hope that you have, I want us to be okay. I want us to be happy. I want us to be healthy. I hope you're doing well. What are your hopes for your future self? Interrogate that now. Okay, and wrap up. Find a place where you can bring that to a close. You can close the letter however you want to. How would you sign off to yourself? You know, be authentic. What? How would you normally speak to yourself? And come to a stop. So you've got that now to look back on, to revisit. And again, there might be things that surprised you, things that you didn't know you were thinking or feeling. Um, what I would love for you to do if you can, if you're in a space and a place where you can, is to read this letter out loud to yourself. Um, because there's something powerful that happens when you actually hear the words um, and it's as if someone is saying it to you and you're kind of experiencing it directly and it feels quite different from reading it. And I know it might feel a bit weird if you're not used to doing that, but I really would urge you to do that um, because yeah, it kind of goes into, I think a different part of you as you're reading it out loud. And it's quite an interesting experience and to, to recognize how you feel as you're reading it as well. Um, so that is also an exercise you can return to. Every time I do it, I write something different. I have a different conversation with myself. Um, and it's also a letter that you can return to, like wrap, um, fold that up and put it somewhere, um, put it in a drawer or put it somewhere safe and return to it in a few months time or return to it in six months time when we're in another place, when we're in a different place um, where things look slightly different, more they look different um, and read it. To yourself again and see if you're feeling shift see if you're surprised if what you said see if what you've written comes true and all of your hopes are happening in that future for your future self i've really enjoyed this i really hope you have i hope that you have written a few different things that you're proud of and that you've enjoyed the process of writing um, and maybe discovered some new exercises that you can take with you and return to. Uh, if you would like to upload your video for the Voices Rising project, then please do. I would love to hear some of it, some of what you've created. Um, and I hope that you all keep safe and I hope that you enjoy your weeks. Thanks.